Hello, and thank you for joining me today. This overview presentation is being provided to you by Nalco Water and Ecolab Company. The purpose of this very short video is to provide you a brief overview of a recent requirement from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Today, we will review the announcement, provide a brief background on Legionella, discuss what the new policy requires, and what resources are available to help you meet and comply with this new requirement. The requirement CS1730 was created to reduce Legionella risk in healthcare facilities. It applies to all 17 provider and supplier types, and the requirement was sent out to state agency survey directors. The policy is focused on water systems and is developed for the prevention of Legionella and other opportunistic pathogens in water. This requirement is effective immediately. Let's take a step back and look at some background information on Legionellosis, a disease of the upper respiratory system. This disease is caused by Legionella bacteria. It can be found all around us and specifically in water systems. There are two types of Legionellosis. Legionnaire's disease and Pontiac fever. Legionnaire's disease is a pneumonia-like disease and hospitalization is common. The CDC estimates there are 8 to 18,000 cases per year and a fatality rate of nearly 10 percent. It is important to note that in order to contract Legionellosis the bacteria must be inhaled as an aerosol or water mist. On rare occasions aspirating water by activities such as sucking on ice chips can cause the disease. Please understand that drinking contaminated water does not cause legionellosis and it is also not believed to be contagious through contact with other people. An additional fact you should know is that DNA fingerprinting techniques allows investigators to match the legionella strain found in the victims to the strain found in particular water systems. This means they can find the source of a case of legionellosis through in-depth water testing. As you can see on this map, there have been numerous outbreaks of Legionella. Some have been in the news. This map represents a number of outbreaks across the U.S. and they are increasing. They are also not limited to any one geography. We have also seen increased regulations and attention to Legionella. Shown here are some of these new standards and laws that are already in place. The ASHRAE organization has developed a standard for managing Legionella risk. Guidance has also come from the CDC by referencing the ASHRAE standard and providing more direction in their toolkit. VA medical centers have also developed a new directive for Legionella control, and the New York City and New York State Departments of Health have implemented laws to comply with Legionella risk mitigation. CS1730 requires a healthcare facility to develop policies and procedures to inhibit microbial growth in water systems there are three things a facility must do. They must conduct a facility risk assessment. They should implement a water management plan considering the ASHRAE Standard 188 and CDC toolkit. And lastly, a facility must define and specify protocols and ranges for their control measures and document testing and corrective actions. Documentation is very, very important. As a reminder, CMS requires this of all Medicare certified healthcare facilities, including certified hospitals, nursing facilities, skilled nursing facilities, and critical access hospitals. So what is available to support you in meeting this new requirement? In 2016, the CDC sent out a newsletter and created a toolkit to give facilities a process to follow and create a water management program. This week, we have seen the CDC send out a second update reinforcing the need of healthcare facilities specifically to develop a water management plan. The toolkit also references the ASHRAE Standard 188, which we will talk about next. The ASHRAE Standard 188 is also available to help you. It was the first U.S. standard to manage risk for Legionella. ASHRAE 188 outlines a process to develop a water management plan, thereby reducing your risk. Let's now take a look at the components of a water management plan. A water management plan consists of seven different areas. To save time, I will not go into the details behind each section, but here are a few key points. You should be aware that a water management plan is a living and breathing document. 
in that it is truly an ongoing process to mitigate risk. It is developed and managed by a team representing key disciplines within your healthcare facility. It contains processes and procedures on testing protocols, verification and validation steps to ensure compliance. Finally, the last section is about documentation. It is critical to keep track and document your work that is focused on reducing risk. So what are the steps to meet the CMS requirement? The first one is conduct a risk assessment to identify those at-risk water systems within your facility. This includes an audit of your water systems. Second, you should implement a water management plan based on that risk assessment. Third, you must establish testing protocols, frequency and location for Legionella and other waterborne pathogens. Not a CMS requirement, but considered an industry best practice, is to establish an emergency response plan if an outbreak or sus suspected case were to occur to develop remediation procedures and processes in the event your testing practices identify a pathogen present at or above an actionable level. At Nalco Water, we are proud of our long-standing support of all your water safety needs. We have extensive experience supporting water management plans, pathogen analytical testing, and developing short-term remediation and long-term control strategies. If you would like more information on any of the information presented in today's video, please contact us at watersafetyinquiry at ecolab.com. Thank you.